In this video, I'm going to cover how to use the plane effector to create an animation that looks like this. We've taken some simple text, and we are rotating each letter one at a time, simply by taking a plane effector and moving it through our object. If you take a look at the plane effector, you can see that it's got a yellow box on the outside and a red box on the inside. The yellow box on the outside represents no effect, and the red box on the inside represents 100% effect. And you can see as I drag it through my text, depending on where it runs into the center of my object, uh, it's either working or it's not. And we're just animating the exposition to get it to uh, rotate our text like this. So to start, open up Gimbal Text Start. If you are working on this from home, you're just going to have to uh, perhaps add a MoGraph text object and uh, go from there. But uh, for the students in my class, you should have access to a Gimbal text start file. Uh, first things first, we want to give this text some depth. So I'm going to turn off my render camera so I can rotate around my scene without messing that up. And uh, next, I'm going to create an, uh, a fracture object. So I'm going to go to MoGraph, Fracture. I'm going to select all of my paths by selecting the first path, holding down shift, selecting the last path, and then dragging those into my fracture object. Next, I'm going to delete that null object. Uh, and again, I'm putting my paths individually into the fracture object so that I can rotate each and every one of these around its respective axis. Notice that the axis for each of my letters is centered in the letter. Uh, if it was not, I would have to move the axis so it was in the center. Otherwise, my objects would be rotating from the wrong place. Uh, but I digress. Next, we want to give this some depth. And we're going to do that uh, by putting it in an extrude NURBS object. So take extrude NURBS and drag your fracture object inside. Uh, what I see is that only my S has uh, any depth right now. And I'm going to fix that by going to my extrude NURBS object and turning on the hierarchical option. I now have all of my uh, letters activated. And hierarchical just says, don't just look at the first object, look at all of the objects. Next, give it a bit of depth. So I'm going to increase the depth here to, say, 40, or maybe even more than that. Uh, I want a square, roughly, at the side of my T here. So for me, that's 200. And next, I'm going to add some caps with rounding. So I click on the Caps tab and choose Fillet Cap and Fillet Cap. And that just gives me a nice little bit of rounding on the corners to pick up some highlights. I'm going to increase the number of steps to 5 and the radius to 10. And uh, this will really help uh, the appearance of any reflective or shiny objects. I'm going to rename this uh, Extreme Herbs object to text so I know what it is. And uh, next up, I'm going to start affecting this with a plane effector. So to do that, I want to select my Fracture object so that Cinema 4D knows I'm trying to adjust this MoGraph object. And then I'm going to go to MoGraph Plane Effector. Now the Plane Effector works like pretty much every other effector. If you click on the Parameters tab, you can adjust position, scale, rotation, and a number of other settings. And uh, what it does is it applies a simple move, scale, or rotation to all of the objects unless you add some sort of fall off. Uh, what I want to do is not adjust the position, but adjust the rotation. And for rotation, I want my letters to rotate 90 degrees on heading. So I get something like this. If I look through my render camera, which I can do by scrolling down to it and just clicking on this icon next to it, I can see that the text is more or less hidden, uh, which is exactly what I want. Now, I could just animate the strength of my effector, but the problem is that all of my letters would be rotating simultaneously, and I want it to happen one at a time. So to uh, do that, I'm going to activate something called falloff. What falloff does is it limits the effect of my effector to a specific shape. Right now, that shape is infinite, so everything's getting affected. But if I was to change this to, uh, say, a sphere, only those things inside of my sphere right here, uh, which I can adjust by changing the scale setting, uh, are affected. Now, a sphere is not the most useful shape for this, so I'm going to change my shape to box and get something like this. 
I want my inner red box to be the size of all of my text right here so that it's fully encompassed. And then I want to adjust the yellow on the outside here so that I've got at least a couple letters of transition. So I want to be able to fit a couple letters in here. So that, that looks about right to me. Uh, my settings are, looks like 600 for size on X. And then I've got a scale of 1260. Uh, just play around with the size of this box until you get something you like. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is go to frame zero, uh, the part of my animation where there should be no effect. And I'm going to move my silhouette here all the way over to the left. And I'm going to press record. And that's going to add a position, scale, and rotation keyframe. Next, I'm going to go to frame 90. And I'm going to move my effector so that it is encompassing all of my letters completely. And I'm going to press record. So now when I press play, I get an animation that looks like this. Uh, and if I preview this in my render camera, it looks pretty good. Uh, the problem that I have is it's the exact opposite effect of what I want. I actually want all the letters to start out sideways and then turn to face the camera. Uh, lucky for us, there's a really nifty setting in our plane effector which does just that. It says, uh, I want to do the opposite. So click on the plane effector, go to the fall off tab, and just turn on invert. And what we're doing is we're saying that everything that is not inside of this box is completely affected. All of these parameters, all these settings here are applied to every object that is not in this box. So now when we play through, as the letters get into the box, the effect of the effect or the rotation becomes less and less. And you get something like this. Now what's really cool is, uh, or, or may maybe just a, a useful trick, is if you want uh, these letters to seem even more flat, you just want to increase the length of your lens. So go into your render camera and change the field of view from 53 to something like 200, which is a, a telephoto. And then, oops. What did I do here, 53? Oh, not field of view, excuse me. That's not what I want to change. I want to change my focal length here to 200. and then zoom out. And then notice that as I zoom out, the letters seem even more flat to camera. You get even more of a silhouette effect. So uh, that's just a fun little trick. To flatten out perspective, use a longer lens. There you go.